hundred thousand dollars grant for the armory <coughs> for the revitalization fund. Right. They wanted to give us one hundred and eighty thousand dollars during the last council tenure, and the council would not take it up when I asked them about it, and it was almost a sure thing just for work on the armory. DHCD loves and likes the Blackstone Armory and the town of Blackstone. They're very supportive of all programs, including that six hundred thousand dollars one senior program tonight that DBI has not. Well, I think we're talking about a different. There, there's a, there's a couple of different grants. We're, out we're there. talking about a different. That's grant. okay. The only building on the on the whole thank you that on the whole thing that can be you can get a grant for six hundred thousand dollars for the community so no other project qualifies for that for the community. Well, I wish that you would let me do my homework and report back to council about the grant I'm talking about. Well, maybe tonight is a new era in that uh, partnership. Mr. Mitchell. Yes, sir. In the beginning, I was on the first committee that we started this thing 30 years ago, whenever it was. We went to South Boston and we were looking for ways of getting maybe tobacco money and all this kind of stuff. We, we fell through with nothing. So we decided to try to raise the money ourselves. Well, me being involved in so many other things, I withdrew because I was president of WCP at the time also. So I withdrew from the committee with the understanding that no much money be used for ta no tax dollars be used in this. And I approved of the armor being, as long as, as long as grant money, no problem. Any way you want to get the money, it's all right. But all I want to do is see the, see the building done in according to Hoyle. According to, <laughs> according, a, according to what? A, that's a gambler's guy. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, let me, let me be clear on one thing. One thing, one more thing. All right. And what I'm saying is, I didn't care about that because I couldn't do it. I couldn't be there with them, but I, I, never, I never disapproved this film. But when you start using taxpayers' money and you're using little just the ways not doing by, by the way, way the contract, I mean, the way the things have been doing by better plans, you know, but how to get rid of certain things and how to do certain things, using old plans to do it, I disapprove of all this. And this is part of it because I, I don't really care about the people who are using the Army because we used it once before. But what I'm saying is, don't side from the Patriots because it should be come out and saying we're going to do this. We got we got plans that've been approved by the county or whatever it is. None of that stuff is coming. We, nobody knows a thing about that. I see people working every day. But one one thing I think it needs to be clear in this room tonight: this council has not said we're going to spend tax dollars to renovate the armory, I know and this that. council has not said we will not spend tax dollars. It's to be decided this year. I do want to thank that's, you. That's on any community. Right. There's no, this this council scenario. is still struggling with the issue in the 19th year of its discussion. The one thing I do want to tell you, Mr. Mitchell, I want to thank you for coming to the podium and being a watchdog like you've been. You did say publicly recently you had a letter in the newspaper about me having a conflict. Mm -hmm. I want everybody to know the building that was built in 1936 is named in memory of my late great-grandfather, who I never knew. He died in 1930. If this council decides to renovate the army, and if the community wants to turn the page and name it something different, I personally have no objections. I don't want anybody out there to think, well, the mayor wants to renovate it because it's named after his great granddaddy. That is false, and I want to make it clear tonight that, that I have no dog in the game other than the fact that I do happen to think it's a rock-solid, sound asset that's worthy of being considered to be renovated. That wasn't the reason I said that. The reason I said it was because you are akin to him. And, and that and everybody with any sense know that conflict of interest means you got some reason to want this thing done. What I'm, I'm saying, not saying that you did this, but I'm saying right. it's possible you well, did Well, what I'm we saying is a good faith gesture that I'm willing to, yeah. if, if, if that name and the kinship bothers anybody. That, no, that, that right now is very minute. And we keep going over the same old stuff that is totally <laughs> and irrelevant. It's tiresome. It, it really is. It's really getting to the point where it's getting tiresome, we're not getting nothing done, we're arguing, and nothing is getting Here's a solution. Solved. Tonight, y'all can authorize town staff to, to apply for every grant they see that you've identified tonight. You can do that. You know, and, 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 and it's really, and, and, I, and, and I don't think it's right that we got to go through the summer arguing about the armory, then we got to other to town to business, worse than and, 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 and it's, it's really tiresome. Mm -hmm. And it's caused the animosity amongst the, the town council. I you can say it, you can say it's not, but it is. 
Well, and it's one. causing animosity you, amongst the citizens. You're the only one whenever we have a meeting that gets wound up. <laughs> yeah, it gets wound up because of time. That's his time. Right. That is his time. Right. We should that start right, right now to get all the right stuff we've been that. bringing up in happen. every meeting since August. Oh, correct. And start moving forward with a group of people who are being proactive with this building, doing as much as they can now with what they have. Let's start looking at what we maybe can do to put with them to help them out. Well, I don't. I just a suggestion for council. Your council instruct with a vote tonight for count for the staff to research and look at grants and bring back to this council oh, very good. Very the available good. grants, such as the one that Mr. Miller just mentioned, and apply for them. Would that ease attention? Because bring them back to us prior to applying. Yes. I don't want to commit. No. To that yeah, that's no. That's I'm right. saying bring to identify because we got Walter Mack talking about a grant that I've seen. You talking about a grant. Let's bring them all to this council and vote on them next month. Or sooner. Well, that's all I said. They hadn't been organized. If everybody could understand what's going on. Well, Mr. On. Osborne. One closes in March. Well, we, well, we but then we need to move the then. There's no way it can be done prior. But, to folks, let me just tell you all something. I sat in those chairs out there. This debate started in 2000. <laughs> so if your patience is running thin, trust me, no one's patience is worn out more than mine. Yes. But we're not going to get getting excited. It's not going to solve the problem. That's right. And bringing irrelevant stuff up right. into this meeting every month is not going to solve any problems. Is it? We met with... So, um, let the committee do today, Anything else on the arm? There's nothing yeah. irrelevant when somebody's got a problem. Well, well maybe for you, Mr. Mr. Alden. I, I appreciate you, oh. right. Mr. Okay. Mitchell. I really right. do. I appreciate and you. We're going to disagree you know here. I appreciate you. Yes, and I, I'm saying this with the utmost respect. Okay. There are topics brought up in this meeting every month that don't belong here. Oh yeah. Sure. Okay. Sure. We're going to need to go over the the past. We need to look at the future. Amen. Okay. Amen. So, how about letting us do that? I, I now, say, and, all and see I'm if you might be proud of us once we're done. By the, by, the, by, the, by, the, by the regulations and stuff, that will be done. I don't mind it because everything is being done by regulation. Okay, but I've seen some coffee where I, I like. I met with Walter Mack. He showed me some stuff, and now let me look at. Now I, I'll do this. So I said, well, that's all right. Don't worry about yeah. that. But I've always approved of the armor. Yeah. I want to recognize Mr. Allman. Yes, Mr. Yeah. Allman. But you're a good, fresh face in the audience. It's good to see you. <laughs> um, uh, whether it's through donations or through tax dollars, um, I'd like to make sure it's taken care of and everything. You guys do this, uh, decide to go that route. On the topic of estimates, have, uh, do we have an avenue looking at maintenance estimates? You know, you know, to keep it nice, you're going to have to clean the bathrooms. You're going to have to we get a pool. You know, that's a whole other thing. I don't know how the ordinances go with lifeguards and all that. General staff and maintenance and all that. We have an estimate. Well, we're in the beginning phases. Uh, so if you just give us yeah. time to work through the different phases and what we're going to need, what not, then I'm sure you'll have your answer. <coughs> but but there, there's a real questions, there real world questions that have to be addressed. No matter what you do, you have to maintain. Just like the county has to maintain the officers' club. Right. Any other yeah. questions? I see Ms. Janet Bennell. Members of council, any anything else for the no. Let's go. Hold on. Go to the Hold on. Mr. Mitchell, one last comment, then we gotta move on. <sighs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Anything else, Mr. Norbeck? Anything you'd like to add? Nope. Would you? Would you? Would you? <laughs> Waiting for instruction. Okay. Would council? Would, would council? Would uh, I'm gonna, no, I want before we go on. Would council like to ask staff to identify grants that could be obtained and bring them back before the council? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Comma consent. Comma consent. Yeah. All right. Moving right along. 
Our next issue on the agenda after the Armory is 6th Street. We have an estimate in your packet. Mr. Van Orbeck. Uh, B&B consultants came out and looked at the site. Uh, they did determine that they were agreeing, they were in agreement with the estimation that the pipe itself is too small. It's an 18 inch culvert and they recommend based on the drainage area that a 24 inch culvert would be the, what would be installed today if it were to be installed. Uh, in order to replace it and resolve the issue, you can't just do a portion of it. I think Ms. Blevins and I had talked to maybe she could just do half, but it's all 18 inch pipe. And if you're gonna fix it, fix it and make it all 24, otherwise you're just creating a choke point. Right. And uh, based on B&B's estimation for the removal, the core drilling, uh, the existing head wall, uh, replace two drop inlets, uh, and, uh, and installing the new pipe, uh, about $37,000. That's not including surveying or any of those kinds of Landscape things. Blocks, whatever you tear up, I mean, that's not including. That's just, just straight up those four items in there. And, uh, you know, we may have to replace some fencing, things like that, if we go into the backyard and that sort of thing. I was reading my packet over the weekend. And I just noticed that we had there was someone, we told you to get a quote from B&B, &B and you did exactly as you were asked. Could we also get a quote from Jay Lee? They, he's done a lot of work around town. Used to be director of public works years ago. And he, so, he comes in a lot of times lower than a lot of these other big companies. Just just to get a, you know, mm, apples, I mean, just get maybe another guess. I'm not trying to prolong it. Yes, Mr. Morgan, I cut you I off. Gonna, did you ever contact your insurance company? I did. They said absolutely it has to be subsurface water to be covered. Who was that you talked to? Um, well, who am I with? It's the Richardson Harrison boat right. The 24 inch pipe, Mr. Norbeck, would that be going starting at the back of her property and going all the way to the street? Because the head wall, I measured it out with a wheel, so it's imperfect, but it's, it was about 149 and a half feet. That sounds Taking about. the wheel down through there, so we estimated 150 feet. All right. Did they even look at connecting the two pipes and putting it all in the ground? Connecting the two pipes. The 18 inch is coming out of the, her neighbor's yard that then comes into the big pool. No, I, had not, goes into the I had not looked at doing that, no. But I think by replacing. Pardon? That would be easy to do. Oh, it's very simple. We've offered it to Jenny Bunn on more than one occasion. And uh, her issue at the time was Ms. Bunn didn't want to necessarily contribute to the cost of, of putting that in. So they, it can be done, absolutely. There's nothing to it. We could do it all the way back up to the College Avenue right away. However, previous councils have decided that private property they haven't been working on. And two, prior to that policy, there was a, a standard where people would pay for the pipe. And I assume that's what the Whitehurst did or the right. predecessors of Ms. Blevins that they participated somehow with the town. On well, that's a challenge. One, one thing we know, we're not archaeologists, I don't think we have to be here, that circa site 1975, town of Blackstone personnel put a nice drain in that backyard. And, and I would say that pipe and everything in there, and the question before the council is, and my answer, my opinion is yes. Now, do I want to spend $37,000? No, taxpayers' money. But I really believe when the town does something like that, and maybe that was a wrong decision back then. Maybe the town years ago should have said, Sergeant Whitehurst, not our problem. But I really feel like the town has made a solution 40 years ago, and it should stand by that. But now, here's here's something I was saying about Mr. Norbeck. Mm -hmm. if, if, let's just... If this council were to decide to, to do something on Ms. Blevins' property, perhaps if we get a cheaper price and maybe there's a better solution comes along. Well, you'd have to bid any of this out. Right, but maybe the property owner could sign an agreement where the town says, look, this is the last effort on this property. We have a three- or four-year warranty, at which point all Claims. repairs become yours. Why wouldn't we put an easement in place? And then Such as that. It's town's right. pipe. It should be town's problem. Well, correct. I'm just trying to look at – I know that some of the members of the council and staff are worried about once you go on private property, you set a dangerous precedent. But I think on this property, we – is unique because we did go on private property 40 years ago. So it's, you kind of own it. It's like Colin Powell said, you break it, you own it. Mm -hmm. um, the precedent's already been set. I mean, because I can't see it. And I offered once to dig it up and take it out. When I was a member, I was upset. Then you said that you can't touch the pipe, it's town property. So if I can't touch the pipe and, and I can't see it, what can I do? You can dig the pipe out if you want to. No, I'll you told me I can't. Absolutely, you can dig it out at any time. How many things? You can dig it out at any time. You can't restrict oh. or constrict the flow of water. I have a question. How many times since this pipe was put in has this been an issue? 
<laughs> Did it just come up during this hurricane? Does it come up on a regular thunderstorm? No, what? this has been eight months, a year. The previous council dealt with it on two or three occasions, right. I think. Okay. So it's been That's an right. ongoing problem. Ongoing. And it's getting worse. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, the longer we sit, the worse it's getting. And then when it rains, it's really bad. I mean, now instead of just a sinkhole, there's a whole big thing that comes through the yard and goes right down the front drain and right up the front. Can we let's can we not, not to get not to get bogged down, but can we get Jay Lee to take a look at it? And I don't mean to play favorites, but Jay has done a lot. He, Jay has helped the town out a lot. He has knowledge of the town. Might that be? And may not, he, may, he may come back higher if I win. I don't know, but I, I doubt it. Right. Oh, do you want to? You want to cast a wider net? I would. I mean, he's he's from he's more familiar with the town than anybody else is going to be with him. Would you like to cast a wider net and, and talk to more than just Jay Lee? Talk to Rob Biggs. David Biggs, yeah. David Biggs. He'll do stuff like that. Maybe a little small for Biggs, but uh, Jason Walker, probably because there's a concrete component, maybe right. interested in you know putting the pipe in, but he's the concrete guy and taking out the box and putting in the new boxes. That would be right. The sooner we Jason act Dillon. on it, the better. Hmm? The sooner we act on it, the better so we can get it. It was a big deal. <laughs> it, it, it is. It is. <laughs> it is. I see a hand in the back, and I can't see you. I'm sorry. Who are you? <laughs> Who's that? What's your name? What's his name? That's a fair question. Of course, we're hoping that the 2018 was the wettest year we have for the next 60 years, but it might be, it, this might year be might blow it away. It might be every year. Probably. Right. Mother Nature doesn't look at the calendar. Mm -hmm. um, can we agree by common consent? Talk to Jay Lee, Scott Walk, Jason Walker, and Biggs. And, I, and Mr. Lovins, I know you think we're, we're not trying to delay. We're just trying to, there is concern about the, you know, the president. Um, but there's also a concern about my backyard sinking. <laughs> I worry. I, 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 I don't know. know what to say here. I know. You know, I put all the money in the rocks in the gully because I thought it would stop it. It's in favor. Right. And the gully across on the other side where no one lives in that empty house is deteriorating. I mean, you can see a couple feet in there. It's ridiculous. Right. And if something isn't done, there's going to be a really serious issue with it. Right. We want to avoid that at all costs. That's all I want. Yes, Just, you know, give me a yard and Thank you for your patience. We thank you. And you've been very nice to deal with, and a lot of people I know have had far less problems and been not as nice as you've been, and we appreciate that. You have a very serious situation. Moving right along, if there's any, anything else by the council, we'll move on to the Norfolk Southern Lease Parking. Uh, Mr. Minorvac? Uh We did... Uh, discuss this at the committee that uh, there was some concern about making physical improvements on a lease property that really didn't have a, a duration or a long enough duration uh, for some members of the committee. I did contact uh, uh, Norfolk Southern, spoke with Stephen Bray, who's with the, the railroad. He said, well, we just don't do that simply because if we need it, we're going to use it, but we will give you an additional 90 days of termination notice. It didn't get us very much, but... Um, I do think that the uh, lease is as, as favorable as we can get it. Two grand a year? Two grand a year, but remember, we eliminate the lease that we currently have. So that, I believe that's $400 uh, a year. Don't quote me okay. on that, about $400 okay. a year that we won't be paying. So it's really an additional net $1,600 a year. Members of okay. council, what's your pleasure? This will be used to increase more parking for the town. Let's, let's Hasbrook has moved. Ms. Jones has seconded. Now, when we get this lease, there'll be a, I'm, I guess at some point in time, the buildings and property might present a landscaping proposal. Or make Actually, this week, um, Zach Whitlow has graciously agreed to try to help with some money from uh, DHCD sources, Main Street sources. He and I are supposed to meet pending the outcome of this discussion tonight Thank you, Zach. on the 31st, and maybe they have some monies. Uh, some of the other things that we're looking at, there are some drainage needs, and this would perfectly assist us in resolving because you know there's some right-of-way ownership behind uh, the old barrel grocery company you know, there's a railroad spur uh -huh. through there um, there's some drainage issues uh, that can be taken care of on a set of drawings that were prepared many many years ago by Larry and B&B &B consultants 
and this would assist us in resolving some drainage issues at Barrow Grocery. In addition, we've had a request, just so you know, that uh, there are some folks in town who think it may be a good idea to provide electric chargers for cars, and maybe that's a logical I've location that. for that. So uh, those are some of the kinds of things we'll talk about uh, this coming week. Now, I do bring your attention to the Exhibit B on the agreement, okay? And it just says no trees can be planted. I think there are some conditions. We have to be 20 feet off the center line of the rail, of the nearest rail, and those kinds of things at the very end. Now, the railroad does understand that anyone who parks a car, that car that we don't want any coal dust on our cars. You know, they, they've agreed to that, I don't that, think right? they're agreeing. <laughs> 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 when they were grinding the tracks down, wasn't there several issues of damaged cars over there? Did they do anything about that? I think they did. I think that uh, we had a claim. The town had a claim for the uh, police. And there's department. nothing in here that releases them of that liability. Not that I'm aware. That's, I'm surprised. I'll be honest. This has been smooth for a railroad lease. This has been as smooth as you can get one. Yeah. All right. We got a motion to be made and second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. The ayes have it. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Norbeck. Um, moving right along, we have uh, revenue share application but on Main Street between 6th and 8th Street. That has already been awarded to the well, town. I was thinking. Uh, we are still in the process of putting our match completely together. Uh, but I do believe because of the condition of the asphalt on South Main Street that we probably need to proceed on. I don't want to spend a bunch of money patching and then come back and have to dig it right back up a year later. Uh, this is a task order. What I'm asking for you guys to do is authorize B&B consultants to actually design the work and put together a set of plans and bid it out and, you know, spec it out. We still have some steps that we have to take care of um, about VDOT approving plans and all that kind of thing, but I would like to go ahead and get the engineering side of this. This goes from the terminus of the new asphalt at 6th Street, and it is my expectation that it will include the culvert that runs from the parking lot of the church over between Community Convenience and Ricky Barksdale's office, if funds are available to do that. But when might this take place? If all good in your construction? Yeah. In the fall. Which this is paving, curb and gutter sidewalks on Main Street between sixth and eighth. Correct. Badly needed. And and maybe just a little past Eighth Street. There's a culvert that goes under the road. If you remember, we cleaned it up and put yes. wrap in there. Yeah. That culvert's in bad shape. Well, Mr. Council, you've heard the town manager's request. What's your pleasure? Move to approve to um, execute the attached task order with BNB. Second. Mr. Miller has seconded that motion. Um, because of the price involved, we have to have a roll call vote. Starting with Mr. Morgan. Aye. 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 I saw Beverly Ames' hand out. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let me do my first thing for a chamber. <laughs> if this is going to be done in the fall, will it be finished before December? Since that is where we if we start the project, we have to be finished before the paving schedule ends, and the, which is usually mid-November or December. I think it stretched into December this year, uh, but that snow on the 10th of December or 9th that we had. <laughs> but that, that, that road's not going to be closed. Yeah, that, that's a two-day job. That yeah, paving right. there. We lined the parade up. Correct. Yeah, you'll still be able to use Eighth the road. Yeah, the is that our newest in. resident of Blackstone leaving? Is that one of our newest residents? <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thank you. For, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll make accommodation. Open. We'll make accommodation for the parade. Whatever we need to do. All right. Motion. Motion has carried. We haven't had, really had met in parade in two years. The snow, but basically, no one saw the one in 2017. <laughs> we have another item. Um, this is revenue share from Eighth Street to Fair Street. This is a big one. Okay. How? What does it cost on that? Five thousand dollars. Okay. And to submit the application for the revenue share application. This will be a 50 50 between VDOT and town. We applied for 100%, and we were in the same pool as the roundabout, and we didn't get funded, but the roundabout. Yeah. And uh, we're glad for Nottoway County, and we're glad for those families that uh, have had tragedy. And, sure. And Mr. Allman will tell you several employees at uh, UAB Pro have had some issues as well. Hopefully out there. That will be in the, in the town limits. Not too far in the future. <laughs> You're a great comedian. Right? Yeah. But Good I luck will, with that. <laughs> this project would be a revenue share taking an application for a revenue share project. We will start where the one that we're going to design leaves off, and it'll take us down to Fair Street. Remember, the project is very expensive. Yeah. I think VDOT had estimated three or four million dollars. That's why we're estimating only doing the <clears> west <throat> side with curb and gutter and sidewalk. The East side, where Clays is, slope is terrible. It's very steep, and then there's overhead utilities, and that's what really raises the cost. So our estimation would be a revenue share project, simply to do the west side, put a sidewalk, 
you know, six feet wide or five feet wide or whatever. You need six it. feet wide, I think, out there. Maybe wider. You got a fellow that rides a, a wheelchair all the time down through there. So, yep. we this talk is. About, we talk about projects all the time in Blackstone. And outside of the community center, this is probably the most needed project in the town of Blackstone. No doubt. For the safety of the citizens of Blackstone. Somebody's walking by the other day, come back from Walmart on the uh, Ursel Dewey side of the street, walking right on the white line, yeah. and track was coming. I said, this guy might dart out in front of me. He wasn't, he wasn't steady a foot, and it's. Uh, the only, the only problem with the, the proposal, it's, anything's better, but we're going to have to really re-educate people to walk on the other side of the street because right now they walk on the Walmart side. You don't blame them. Um, we might have to have something where it's a crosswalk or something, It'll maybe even a stoplight. A I mean, crosswalk down there at Fair Street or, yep. or in that general vicinity. I just don't think even at 50-50 on a revenue share that we can afford half of three or four million dollars to move those utilities and do all that nah. kind of stuff. So, um, all right, you heard the town manager. He'd just like permission to go ahead with the uh, preliminary. I'm sorry, what's that, Mr. Hasbro? I think we could. That's why I want a wider sidewalk. Yes, sir. All right, I didn't have a motion. Ms. Thompson's moved. Mr. Nash is seconded to proceed with the task order or the application. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Uh, the next item has been withdrawn. Ms. Dalton graciously appeared before the council. Next up is your uh, airport entrance road to award the bids. This will be an entrance road from Dominic Corner to the entrance that's already been paved to uh, Textron's buildings. This would actually be the entrance into the industrial park portion of the airport. Uh, this is all airport funds that we've been saving our shekels over the past few years. Jennifer dutifully put the money aside. And we have an estimation, excuse me, we have a bid back in the amount of $55,189.35 from Lee's Excavating, as a matter of fact. And uh, we received three bids, and they were the lowest in the recommendation from our engineer is to award to Lee's Excavating. I'm asking authorization to award and execute the necessary document. Entertain a motion by council. The, the low bid is 55,189. Mr. Lee is 10%, he's 20% cheaper than the next lowest bid. Is there a second? Ms. Jones is second the motion. Uh, any discussion? I'll have a roll call vote starting with Mr. Morgan. Aye. 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 That motion carries 7 0. Moving right along. Um, now, this is a, a blast from the past conditional rezoning on 8th Street. Which this council either in October or November was in November tabled. They did table it. Table it. And asked me to speak to the property owner. I have spoken to the property owner, and he um, has reiterated, man, I'm, I'm more than happy to follow these proffers and, and the conditions that I've offered. He said, but the problem is about committing to the exact design. If it doesn't suit with a buyer, then we got to come back and redo the whole thing. I don't want to tie the hands of a buyer of the property. He'll commit to it's only a parking lot. He'll commit to screening next to the residential property next door. He will commit to only those things and no gas stations, no other general business uses. It would be an auxiliary parking lot specifically to that property that's on Main Street now. Lighting would be directed away from residential area. And uh, he said, I just don't want to make an absolute commitment on the parking lot design because that may not be suitable for a buyer. And I don't want to increase that kind of a conflict. So really nothing's changed other than time has elapsed, but the, the request is the same. Now we, I see, I'm going to recognize Ms. Pinnell who lives on that street, the Jan Pinnell of 8th Street. Um, can I get a little more clarification on what this is as it's on 8th Street? Sure. It's a turn rate for Jan Pinnell. We'll go back in history. In 2000, in 1992, the town of Blackstone zoned all the properties across the street from you on the north side of 8th Street between Lunenburg and Maine, those were rezoned general business. That's right. You could have put a gas station there without restriction. In 2007, I'm not sure, but my predecessor, Larry, was living in that general vicinity at one point, and they may have had some reason why, hey, these are residential, we'd like it to stay residential, and it was rezoned. In doing so, this vacant lot adjacent to the medical center was also put in there. But I think my predecessor, who owned the house, on 8th Street, also on this vacant lot. That's correct. And, that, um, and, and I will say this, it makes more sense, that is a residential area. The only thing you've got commercial there is the medical center, which is, and the Heritage Hall, and th those, you know, but where you live, r across from you, where Devin Alder lives now, that should be zoned residential. Mm -hmm. yeah, it makes sense. Now, so where does 8th Street come into this? We know it's front and front. It's right beside, as right I next to Doc's house. Doc, Doc McGee's, between Doc McGee's house and the back of Blackstone Physical Therapy. Are 
Main Street parking lot? They can do Coming that now. Main Street. They can do that now. The entrance is not in, in It's the parking that requires the rezoning. It's just the parking. You can put an entrance out onto the residential street. They're within their rights to do that. But the rezoning, I believe, as the zoning administrator made the decision that I'm going to make him rezone it because it will be accessory to probably some commercial activity that would be up on Main Street. Would that increase traffic on Main Street? I would say some. Probably between the stoplight and the driveway. It's going Towards the stoplight. It's going to increase it even if you just did a parking so or a driveway. 8th Street isn't exactly a wide street. So oh, no. It's among the widest I run on. Other than, yes, ma'am. It's, it's, well, people park alongside of well, They do. They sure do. <laughs> um, and I guess I'm just concerned about with increased traffic, we're going to have decreased quality of life. You know, but this rezoning request doesn't affect whether or not they can increase your traffic or not. They can do that tomorrow. Right. It's, this request is limiting it to only certain activity. And that one activity is a parking lot. He's, he's written a list of proffers of things he will and won't, things he won't do. Okay. If, come after that. He could come out there now and put five townhouses. Or he could put some duplexes or something yeah. there. Yeah. But, what, but Mr. Mr. Norvick, I think the main thing is if this would enhance the, the sale, let's, say, let's just talk out loud. I mean, no secret here. Rumored, you know, times there was talk of a, ho a small hotel or something being placed there. It would, you know, certainly they can enter and, and exit off Main Street. It would just be an auxiliary entrance. Certainly. I don't think folks at a hotel they're going to say, "Hey, honey, uh, let's go drive through this dark residential area that we don't know anybody in." Mm -hmm. They're going to say, "Where's Walmart and where's Wendy's?" I'm, you know, that's my thinking, but I don't know. Hopefully, uh, we we took no action last time. Now there was a pro another property owner who you spoke to who was very vocal across the street. Initially right. was was opposed. They had asked for the drawing, and that is what generated the request to Mr. Donito. Okay. And uh, Mr. Donito didn't say he wouldn't do it, but he said. Guys, I just don't want to tie my hands to something. He's a business guy trying to sell the property, and more restrictions are not as good as fewer restrictions. What says council? Do you wish to rezone? The planning commission did recommend it. They did. It's it's a tough. Here's a tough call. I don't mind telling you. I think anything zoned R, but it starts with an R, is pristine. I think, and when you have, you know, people who bought homes there, you know. Even though it's a small lot, and like even though he can do that right now, I certainly understand council's consternation, and yours as well, because who knows what the future holds. But our residential—that's that's that's sacred stuff there. I mean, that's what people talked with the property owner that was in question last time, and they, um, I think Philip and I both explained that the fact that they could come in in the current zoning right now that it's at, they could put, I mean, just duplexes and townhouses in there all they want, and actually a parking lot would. Provide better security for them. But he could put a he could put a townhouse or condo on there now, and that would a lot. That's true. Well, I don't know that. Right. well, but you can't stop that. He can do it. But this would stop that. This might be the most benign thing you could have. This would stop you couldn't have them. In. They could only do a parking lot at that time. They could only do well, that. You had some issues last time. Well, that's because of the property. I don't think well, that'll be determined by the setback required to the residential property. Doesn't have you've, you've got a buffering requirement on the resident on dock side that he recognizes he has to follow. The number of spaces will be predicated by how many can put in, and how many are really required based on the use of next door, and how many he'll need to do. But uh, the lighting will be directed away from the adjoining properties. The screening will be put in, and it's strictly for parking. So this would be a conditional rezoning with a conditional, not a conditional use permit necessarily, but the, the, the proffered conditions are really a deed restriction almost. And uh, so they would pass with the property and they wouldn't expire with Mr. Donito or anything. They would stay with the property and those conditions could only be changed after a vote by the county. Has there been any stipulations as to whether it's a gravel parking lot or paved parking lot? I think it would have to be paved. I don't think we... we stipulate we, that it says paved. We can. You can do anything you want tonight. Conditional rezoning, you can add it. I move that we approve the request as presented with adding that parking lot must be paved as gravel. So in addition to the proffer, in addition to the, the, the listed proffers, you're adding another proffer that the parking lot be paved. Be asphalt. 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 Okay. Right. And ship and seal. Second in Mr. Nash's motion. Second. Mr. Wilkerson a second. Any further discussion? It just kind of makes it more of a formal parking lot and not just I'm something with you. I'm with where you. a truck would park out there. I personally think the rest of that side of the street, that's another issue, should be saying R1, not R2, but anyway, I digress. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7-0.
Very good. Um, moving on to ongoing projects. Um, nothing on dilapidated buildings. No. Meal state. I want to bring up something to the council, and I want to thank the finance director, Jennifer Hardy. Just, I, I got information I want to just spread, uh, share with y'all. This was the first year we did not have the toy trains running at Belt. There was a lot of consternation about how that was going to hurt the restaurants. And so, in my other capacity, being a curious reporter, I asked Jennifer, what were the meal tax collections for the months of November and December? A new record. Higher than uh, 2017 beat 2016. This past November and past December beat last year. And there's still three that have not reported. So, I just want to, that's some good news. What's that? Well, I think the fast seat construction workers are probably helping, but it's still good news. Still good news. So I want to give you that. Um, under number three, street improvements. Town manager's politics. <laughs> Clark, do you want to move to adjourn? <laughs> well, number three, uh, Mr. Verlo, back on the uh, curb and gutter on 4th Street. Curb and gutter. The physical improvements are, are complete. Good. We still need to put some gravel in Mr. Taggart's driveway. I think we've created a little dam there. Then the water's standing in his yard. We have some work there. And also a tree in the Everhart's yard. It's kind of encroaching where the driveway is. So we're going to work on a couple things and move the stop sign back behind the curb. Uh, Fourth Street is uh, completed. Uh, we will begin the process of either collecting the money or recording the deeds of trust. But everybody has signed on the north side, the Everhart's have come in and executed their agreement. We still have one person on the south side, but we still had the three-quarter property owner so we can record the memorandum of lien. The lady on the phone indicated she was agreeable, but we haven't gotten the signed document back. But we're within the parameters of the town's policy of about three-quarters property. Uh, curb and gutter on Maple Lane. We had a, um, a powwow here at the office with all the property owners. We notified them. Uh, the property owners uh, on the west side of Maple Lane, Ms. Hageman, uh, Tom Hunter, um, Ed Harris, our employee lives uh -huh. on that side, Mary Liz Carter. Um, can't say they were unanimous. One of them was not returned to us, but again, we had the three quarters. But John Beal, one of them, he owns a house on there. Yes, but he didn't return the documentation. <laughs> we'll get on him. I don't think he's opposed, <laughs> and he didn't indicate he was imposed. I just haven't seen the documents. Okay. But that work is probably three quarters of the way done. Um, if you go down there and look, side. it looks great. Just on the west side. I don't think we're going to get a plethora of yeses on the east side. I have one signed, and that is all I've got out of five houses, I believe. And uh, I just don't think we're going to get a lot of traction. The majority of folks over there are not interested in the deed of trust. So are they going to get the order now? Yeah. That, the, that the other side has? They will if we didn't lay this correctly. But the intention of curb and gutter is the water will run from the crown of the road into the gutter pan and then discharge either the west entrance or and the vast majority of that water will go go right by Ed's house. It's going to go right by Ed's house. Okay. Well, if they do get in the public line up to all get the curb and gutter. <laughs> well, if you go down there, it's kind of muddy right now, and uh, but I don't know if that's swayed anybody at this point. Dollar still talk, but uh, they may come back in the future. But our initial reason for going down there with Tom Hunter and Ms. Hageman being concerned about that ditch just staying full of water constantly. Right. So um, I think they're both satisfied Tom was happy and Miss Hageman appears to be uh, quite satisfied. Sounds good. Very good. You'll get some more requests soon, I think, for Kerber Gutter. Tap 21, nothing to report there. Uh, utility upgrade, Mr. Norbeck. Contractors are working. Lisbon Construction is working out at the wastewater plant and soon we'll be starting on Courthouse Road Pump Station for some improvements there. Um, road boards have been completed on 10th Street at Fort Pickett. If you're familiar with the booster station that the county gave us the site, over there near the community college property. Uh, the boards are in and they're starting to work in that location. Storm sewer is installed in the alley between Elm and Maple. Ugh. That's behind, is that behind the mesh and That's, yeah. And the contractors cut the sewer line and it backed up, in, backed up into Moncure Insurance the other night. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's the contractor's responsibility, correct? Right? We're going to have that discussion with the contractor. Most definitely so, yeah. It was working before, and then yeah, they well, I bet they got insurance on the gym. gym. <laughs> There's a sewer back up. I like old Jim. <laughs> Jim thinks I got it. He's all yours. Yes, everybody that bids on town uh, projects will have insurance. He's talking about where the sewer yeah. backed up. They probably have good insurance, too. Moncure probably knows <laughs> who to call. There will be a claim toward no the problem. town, uh, but we're just going to have to iron it out. as a contractor town, and I think our insurance company will have to make that determination. Yep. And she's already submitted it to the end. That would be, a, but I tell you, for 30 years that place, that's when it rains hard, it'll be a Man. big improvement back there. 
We also are going to uh, replace the water line while we're in there. It's a two-inch galvanized water line that serves Acapulco's and, yeah. and farmers. It's a lead gooseneck, so we're going to go on scratch that while we're in there and yeah. make sure the sewer line is uh, properly connected. Oh, wow. Two-inch line? Huh? It's a two-inch line? That's all it serves at restaurants back That should be at least a six-inch line, shouldn't it? Uh, no, I don't think you need a six inch. I think that the flow is adequate, okay. but the materials that it's a galvanized line that's corrosive and rust and all that. So they uncovered that. So we're going to go ahead and get that replaced at the same time while we're in there, so we don't have to go back and dig it up six months from now. Because no good effort or deed will go unpunished because a water line will break under new asphalt every single time. The whole alley or just behind those two businesses? We mean the, uh, the water line will come from Maple Street, I believe. But you're yeah, all the way. All right, all the way down. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, East End, anything to report on the East End? Nothing to report on the East End. I think um, Yvonne has a little bit of information in there. And that we're, Our plan is to be approved for contract execution on February 8, 2019. Next week. Okay. And I do think there are a few uh, items that uh, Yvonne and I would like for you to consider. Uh, the business and employment plan, I think you've adopted these in the past. They're a requirement. A minority-owned and female business-owned business notice. And um, I don't guess you have to approve the certification of signatures, do you? I do intend a motion to approve all these uh, standard applications, these uh, plans to confirm that we are non-discriminatory, that we do with all the so other moved. grant projects. So moved. Mr. Nash's move. Is there a second? I second. Mr. Miller has second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 6 0. Mr. Morgan stepped out briefly. Rental property means I think that there's a, uh, some scheduled dates for uh, public meetings or public hearings and uh, um, the time frame to adopt, not excuse me, to conduct those meetings and when the, the actual inspections are going to begin. We're tentative because we want to make sure we don't create any more of a mess than what we anticipate could come out of this because it's controversial you got and there's only one point. building inspector in not we count mm -hmm. and let me just and I don't want to bog us down but 65 percent of the people in Blackstone are renters so that's a high volume of people he's obviously when you there's certain complexes you ride by that, you know they they look okay and there's no complaints but I guess complaints would be as far as the sequence of uh, priority if, if a renter calls hey look my floor is falling apart you know this place is terrible I think Yvonne can answer some of those questions, but yes, people can call in and then we will conduct an inspection. Yeah, those calls to Dean. To Dean, to the, and then he will inspect and charge $50. No, he has to inspect any calls. And Complaints are not charged as part of his duties. Mm -hmm. But as far as our rotating, our, our plan to, to try to hit on a rotating basis of town, he's going to charge each property owner $50 per unit, mm -hmm. which, of course, is going to charge us, and we're County will charge, send us a bill, and then we're responsible for collecting. Several landlords have expressed right? concern to me about that. What it happens if they don't pay it? Well, we have arms and we have uh, garnishments and judgments and all the above things, and I don't think we have anything that's going to eliminate. Hmm? And it's a one-time Right. But it's, it's hard to believe that, we, we, you know, we talk about, and we at least have two animal control officers. We only have one building official in Ottawa County. Isn't that right? As far as I know. And think about what he's tied to. You know, what is, does he have to spend time out at FASI where they're building stuff? Mm -mm. Federal government is exempt from getting uh, okay. building okay. permit. Okay. I just think he must have a busy day. He may have to do some of the state stuff, but the federal government doesn't have to get a building permit and have it inspected. You, I think Tom will okay. contest him. So it's moving, down, it's moving right along, though. As long as Steady wins the race. <clears throat> Weatherization, our house on five, at 511 Stoke Street is That's complete, great. and the family has... Occupied. Um, we're working on putting some more monies aside. I think we have some monies in weatherization. We got to pay our last invoice with uh, uh, SSNS construction. Uh, our, next time our rehab board meets, we're going to try to bring some recommendations to them uh, and maybe try to get some more projects going. We have a fifty thousand dollar weatherization obligation in Mr. Miller's district in the east end uh, and we can either use it for this year or for the next and my expectation is we'll need it for next year which kicks in the 30th of july so there is this current fiscal year's allocation that we can work with now what was the total cost to build this home 64,000. we put up 50 initially and uh, howerton put up 10. 10 and then we've got the difference the town's going to have to pay out of weatherization funds okay. 
I think it can devil the beard right with 64. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Very good. Comprehensive plan. That's getting closer as well, isn't it, Miss Wilson? That's all right. Well, you know, I was talking to the town manager for the meeting. You know, we're going to see a lot of responses, I think, probably. I've heard a lot of people say, Billy, why don't y'all, y'all got to do some of that goodwill building and make that a movie theater. And I'm thinking to myself, it sounds great, but there's just certain things towns don't do. You know, it's probably more geared toward the private sector. But it'll be interesting to see what the responses are. Well, I think we'll all be educated on that. Right. Right. Anytime you can get data, what, what's in people's minds, it's a great thing. I agree with you on that. Slow wins the race, right? Slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> Slow and steady. Okay. Slow <laughs> and <laughs> New business, dump truck purchase. He wants permission, Mr. Brubeck, to buy a dump truck. We've had dump truck issues in the past, as you may or may not know. Uh, we've got an old fleet, old VDOT surplus trucks. And We've bought, purchased two since I've been here, and one of them we've already sold at auction because we just couldn't get it going. It wasn't worth We were going to spend more getting it up and running than we paid for the truck. Uh, the white one that's currently with the leaf truck on it or leaf body on it, that was a pretty good one when we bought at VDOT. But we need to buy at least one more reliable dump truck. So when we have a water leak at night, and this request comes from the water leak we had at Food Line you know, back in the late summer, early fall, um, we didn't have a dump truck that was starting. The guys had to jump start it out there at food line it was a mess so uh best dump truck we've got has got the leaf body on it you don't want to have to stop what you're doing take the leaf body on it and move it so i am making plow, a request plow wise, how many plows do you put <laughs> two we have two two uh, salt spreaders on dump trucks and, and plows now how many leaf blowers leaf machines do we have two we have two we have one on the road one looks really good and one looks really i mean looks new and looks like it's working well we bought that probably three years ago and uh we have the spare we got rid of one the old one and then the one we, we was the primary, we put that as the spare, and then this is the new one that's out there. And it works great. I mean, it's, it pulls those leaves. It's, just, it's funny how leaf, leaf collection just goes later and later. I just I look at the neighborhoods, and it's like the tr leaves don't finish falling until like the end of the year, it seems mm -hmm. like. It's amazing. Um, Masking authorization. We have some funds in our vehicle fund that we, uh, we put aside, um, recycling money. We put aside uh, when we carry cardboard off or steal money or um, the interest from our money market accounts. I'll go into that account. Okay. In addition, I have the funds from the tax payment for the sale of UMAC, and I've set that in that fund as well. The town in the fall received a $44,000 check for outstanding real estate taxes. We haven't spent it, but I'm asking to use a portion of that. For the purchase of a dump truck. We're going to have a Louis Denito day one. We're going to have a set aside day for Mr. Denito. The Methodists paid it, but they paid the county, I think, 87. Oh, so that was the Methodists that paid. But that's what, the, that's what that tax check will be, be every year? It had to be settled at closing. That was the outstanding. Uh, the outstanding for several years. This was for 2015 or Okay. So it might be 10 grand a year. Might be somewhere in there. Now, the assessment may change because now we have a purchase price. And so that may True. radically the decrease the value. Huh? Depends on the use and use of the building. Yeah. So, I think I would like to spend. We've been spending about five thousand dollars. I would say not less than twenty-five thousand dollars. I really want to get a good, reliable, and they're hard to find. And uh, but before I go out here and start jumping around too much, I think that would be the bottom, and then perhaps spend more. I have to come back to you guys. Can we agree uh, by common around. consent. And you agree by common consent to let the town manager procure a dump truck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But right. if you find a deal, I mean, sometimes deals come across. And, if we can find a good one. I, mean, I, I, I trust between Mr. Norbeck and Mr. Nash, it'll be a, be a good deal located. We'll find one. All right. All right, we've done number two with the live burns. And you've got to serve. Uh, You're just going back home and get settled down. Yes, yes. But to come back. To yes. Okay. For that value, yes. before I can purchase something, i got to get yeah. authorization from you. You're here. allowing up to $25,000? We're allowed him to go and get prices and council approve in February. Or it's going to be more than 25 sure. I think, if we get a good quality truck. And then new business number three, you have surplus items that the town manager is asking for you to um, declare surplus. Until such time as we find a dump truck, <laughs> we don't want a surplus, don't surplus, surplus dump, dump truck. truck yet. We're asking that to be taken off and then add one of the police cars, which is a broad charger, which I believe is Matthias's old vehicle. And we have decided we've given up on that car. And it's one of the, I believe, a Dodge Charger. And uh, we are replacing it with a vehicle that has been delivered to the Ford dealership. It is a unmarked Explorer. I probably should have 
gotten rid of that thing several years ago. We pumped some money. Yeah. We've got a lot of money in that car. All right, he needs a motion. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Jones, a second. Ms. Hazard's motion to declare all items surplus but the dump truck. All in favor say aye. Aye. Yeah. Opposed? The ayes have it. On new business number four, I guess this request is still valid. Walter Mack had indicated something that, the, that they were maybe concerned about getting the environmental done before anybody goes in that building. So, Mr. Wilkerson, do you know anything about this? Yeah, it's Matt, Matt Brown, the pastor of the, yeah. of the church. He's also the captain in the uh, Civil Air Patrol. And he, uh, in fact, I saw him tonight and I asked him what was going on with this. And he said they need a, they need a space where they can march indoors. And I said, you know, there's no heat in that building. Um, so I'm not, he, he said he was going to look elsewhere. Okay. Uh, but, you know, I guess, and I told him that there wasn't going to be any, any movement on, you know, eradicating the issues in the Army before probably March, before it starts warming up, before anything can be done. So I think he's going to look at, at the uh, Army Reserve in and out of picket and also the, the uh, Armory. All right. The newer Armory. Maybe we just take no action tonight and hope and if, it, if it turns out they need to come back to us, they can come back next month. All right, under committee referrals, Mr. Van Orbeck, a, a cemetery appeal. You knew we coming. Uh, predicted that. A request for a second upright headstone on an eight-grade space. That will go to buildings, properties, and cemetery. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, under Mayor's Minute, I only had one thing. Um, well, two things. Uh, the first item, I, I, I want us to set a date and time or a parameter of dates for a retreat. Um, my idea on a retreat would be somewhere outside of town, maybe the Picket Officers Club, uh, maybe that's up to council, but several hours of maybe talking finance, town-owned properties, maybe even meshing out a little bit more about the armory that we discussed tonight. By law, they have to be open to the public since some, I know him, Riker had one recently and a few citizens came. You know, We'd have to let people know when, but I, I imagine sometime between now and April 1st, Weekday may be preferable to, or may not. It might be a Saturday. Um, we could go out and have lunch, you know, have morning, early afternoon, and be done. Not a way. Civic League might be another option. Civic League would be a wonderful place. Um, how about if we get authorized staff to see if, to secure either of those facilities and throw some dates back at us in the coming weeks? Mm -hmm. But try to do it between now and April 1st. Um, and the other thing I want to say is we, had, we did have tonight some more spirited discussion somewhat repetitive on the armory, and I commend your passion, but I really do believe, I've said it before, and I'm not just saying it to be a PR guy, I believe this group is going to solve this problem one way or the other. I, I think we are getting along very well. I love the fact that you get mad enough and passionate to put your hand, uh, your hand on the table. And I love the fact that Mr. Morgan will speak candidly to Mr. Mitchell. I love the fact that Mr. Mitchell still comes up and pours his soul out. Well, I, I just, I just really think. That I want everybody to know this is not just fluff. This council is getting along and doing a lot of good stuff, and I expect that to continue in the year ahead. Um, well, real quick, yes. So while y'all are here, before I go setting dates for this, um, are weekends better? Because I know you have some late nights, and you. Who would prefer a weekend versus? Who would prefer a weekend? Who is it? Is it going to work better? I'm either. I'm flexible. I'm flexible. I would prefer a weekday, but I'm flexible either way. I'm Monday through Friday. Okay, well that's fine. Maybe a Saturday, like a, a 9 a.m. to 12 lunch, and then 1 to 3, something like that, and cover some of the five areas. You and I can get together and maybe do a little rough agenda. Um, for me, it's probably be better after February. That's fine. We'll shoot for March. Yeah. Right over March. And a Saturday. A March Saturday. A March Saturday. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We'll all get together. This jet, this jet setting bunch here, we'll get, we'll get on the same page. We've got several items that we added yes, to the yes. as well. Yes, yes. Yes, I know uh, Mr. Worrell, Josh had something on here yeah. with the budget. I'm sorry, Josh. I, it was put them on a packet. Not a problem. Um, I was hoping to have you include some big packet, but the state was slow to get back on a decision for a grant that I applied for. Um, we received a $14,000 RTAP grant to rebrand the bus system, so that item has been taken off the capital um, portion of the operating budget. So in your packet on that first sheet, um, that's the updated budget for Blackstone. It actually went down about like $160 in the capital line. Okay. So the two highlighted items off to the right are what, is, what Blackstone's local matches are now for operating and capital. Okay. Um, the page behind that is the overall consolidated budget. 
Um, so with that, the grant that we were awarded for RTAP, there requires no local matches, 100% state and federal funds. So just fourteen thousand dollar grant. Mm -hmm. So that will cover. When you say rebranding, is it like uh, each bus will have a different design, or that's part of it? Mostly, it's to create a new logo, a new color scheme, um, a new brand, um, to come up with the design for the buses as far as like an overall scheme for it, um, and to redo our brochures with all that. Very good. Stuff the signage will stay the same. Bus stop stays correct. Right. For the time being, those are, um, stay the same. We're going to pry for that in the future, uh, along with some additional um, bus shelters. But that's not part of that project right now. Hard to believe, but the first bus rolled out of Blackstone 16 years ago this month. It was January 03. Long time ago. Wait, one bus and one backup. Um, do we need a motion from council or is this information? It's a reduction in funds, so you've already approved it. Okay, very good. Very good. Thank you, Josh. I think he's asking for his a raise in that amount. <laughs> that oh, we don't do raises until July, right? <laughs> Correct. Do, no, do we, need to, do, we need, do we need to take action? I thought we already took action on the raises. We don't need to take action. Not, not until right, yeah. okay. <laughs> what else do we have, Madam Clerk? Budget billing program? Yes, budget billing. This is important. Budget billing. We're going to start this April 1st. This is really important because there's going to be some rules of budget billing that. I will do my best. Jessica okay. Meadows has been working on this. That's so, all right. Um, I believe the plan is um, we tried to run a test bill today and we're having a few kinks we have to work out with the Bright system. Um, but I believe the plan is we need to have a public hearing to go to the eight and a half by 11 for all utility bills. So, you know, now you get the postcard. Right. Um, I believe. February 28th, when the new bills are printed, it will be on an eight and a half by 11 sheet. Okay. So I know we need to set something up to have that done. Eight um, and a half by 11 sheet, so it'll be folded in an envelope and sent to our house? Mm -hmm. Why, okay. You said we need a public hearing for that. Why is there a public um, hearing? I think we just want to make the customers aware that there's going to be a change. Public meeting or public you don't need to advertise or, hearing. Need yeah, or, yeah. or an advertisement gotcha. in the paper yeah. or something. Yeah, just uh, um, heads up, yeah. As far as the budget billing goes, Customers will be able to sign up when they get that bill. So at the bottom of their bill, they'll have two boxes, I'm interested or no, I'm not interested. Okay. Um, they can put their contact information. Jessica will then contact the customer and let them know the guidelines they need to follow in order to. I'm not sure. We haven't decided yet if they need to come into the office. Um, but there's going to be certain stipulations they have to follow to get on the budget billing. So she'll maybe set up some type of letter saying, you know, approved or declined. So if John Smith says, yes, ma'am, I want to do it, y'all will look at John Smith's prior 12 months right. of you consumption. Right. You have to be sure residence for 12 months. Um, and average it out and say, Mr. Smith, your monthly payment standing. is going to be $300. In good standing with the we'll town. Mm -hmm. No late fees, penalties. And um, as long and this is only for residential. So no, no commercial. No, no commercial. commercial. All right, no this isn't for institutional or commercial. Mm -hmm. But if I, John Smith does a budget plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he's oh gosh, I had my car broke down. I can't I can't make the two hundred fifty five dollar payment this month. Those in the budget plan will not be able to have the special accommodations that have been. And if you miss one budget payment, it automatically kicks you out of the budget plan, okay. and you go back to regular billing. Now, what if you're late? What if you're five days late? The day you're late, it kicks you out. So in other words, if you don't pay by the okay, don't pay by the due date, you're kicked out. Pay by the due date, it kicks you out automatically. Very important to note that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And your due date is when? It'll be the same. The last business day of each month. Bills go out the so first. So the last is the regular bills. Right. The Listen. only difference is budget billing, you have to pay it by the last business day or you'll be kicked out. Regular billing, if you don't pay it by the last business day, then you get the 5% penalty. Pink slip. Right. 10 days until cutoff. But you'll still get that, but you won't be in the program anymore. You'll still get a pink slip and 5% penalty. and. If you're not in budget billing. If you are in budget billing and don't pay. Yes. So if, so if it's due on the thirty first or the thirtieth of this month, that's right. And you don't pay it, the next day you get the five percent penalty. Correct. It's like it kicks and you right back in the regular system. Right. Exactly. You're back in the regular plan, like okay. Mm -hmm. And of course, this month, for example, January thirty first is on Friday, Thursday. Yeah, I think it is the thirty first. So yeah, it's on Thursday. Thursday. So that's when the bills are due. Mm -hmm. So the bills that go out in February, you people are going to be able. to, That's when they can start opting in or opting out. Yep. So if it kicks you out. Can you at a later date get back on them? After 12, 12 more months. 12 months. 12 months. Okay, that was mm -hmm. 12 months of good standing. Yep, you have to have 12 months of good standing at the same residence. It's a privilege. You know, to if you have. move, you have to be at your same resident for 12 months. So a new resident who's come here from Fassi, they, 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 you have to have 12 month track record of good. Okay. Right. okay. So what's the advantage? Well, the, well, the advantage is 
I, the pricing. Um, the fact that you get to. That you can budget. Your, you can your budget. Money. You pay the same thing every month. So if some people may have a $400 bill in February, yours may stay at $190. But tell, Philip raised a good point during the committee meeting a couple months ago is that in the summertime, like in May, when things are, you're used to paying, a, you know, those are usually your low bills. Mm -hmm. uh, with the budget plan, they may be a little higher than normal to make up for the fact that in January, February, you're going to be paying less. Jim Hasbro. Yeah, when I lived in Oregon, you did this. Mm -hmm. And the thing was, you set up your bank account, it would withdraw that amount every month at the same time. So it automatically paid. Ooh. I mean, a lot of people yeah, a lot of, yeah. That's well, a great idea for yeah. those that can do it. Yeah. it. That's just because you know it's like a car payment. Yeah. You know it's coming. You just set it this way and schedule the withdrawal. Yeah. And you make sure that your yeah. check's in. And they can pay ahead if they like, just right. like with the regular billing. But what I'm hoping, what I've heard, what I've learned over the last couple of years, Brittany, is that there are a number of people, y'all have individualized payment pl plans for a lot of individuals in Blackstone. Miss mm -hmm. Smith may do her thing, Mr. Jones, and this may, A, help the consumer, but also help the staff. Because yeah. I don't know how y'all keep your sanity with that many plans. Yeah. Cut off the is a nightmare. I, I can't imagine. Um, what is, can yes, Miss Wilson. Just wanted to know, um, Will nonprofits have that option? Um, only no, residential. no, mm -mm. only residential. Yeah, no commercial. Unless waived by town council. Yeah, right, of course, that can all be <laughs> <laughs> Give it a shot. <laughs> right now, no commercial. <laughs> um, what else, Ms. Harris? Um, I think that's all we have right now. Like I said, when the February bills go out, as long as we work out all the kinks by then, they should go out by then. Um, they'll have the option to sign up. They will contact the town office. We'll let them know what they need to do and then let them know if they're approved or declined. And I believe they won't get their first budget bill until April 1st. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, I'm really... Or maybe May 1st. <coughs> based on the, the... I mean, I'll say that there was a... Especially the last couple of years, there was a strong urgency in the community for this. I hope people do take advantage of it. That can. Um, I have a few more things. Yes, sir. You... Yes. Yes, sir. Same amount every month. And then at the end of the 12 months, if you're, there may be what's called a true up. So you'll have a true up month. Um, that would be April. April's that would be April. Um, any credits will be applied to the month's following bill. Okay. Um, or deferred balance will be due at that time. Okay. So at, by the end of April. Also, if you're kicked out of the budget billing, so say you're on it for six months and then you miss one payment, you're kicked out, that total amount is due at that time. That's right. You don't get to make payments over time. Right. If you owe $900, that's what you have to pay. That's right. That's right. I saw a hand up in the back. I was just wondering if they were going to show up if, they kicked, if you got kicked out. And she just answered that. Okay. So. Very good. Um, does any this? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just making sure I'm trying to think if there's anything else. You cover the highlights, I feel. This has been a long I think time a coming. a huge step is going to be the, the way the bill is presented. In an eight by eleven sheet, I mean that's a huge step. Instead of being on just that postcard, no, yeah, just people being able to see what their usage is because they'll be able to chart it. I mean it'll be a graph on there showing what usages are. That's good. And it'll allow, I think, for more messages too of the town, like mm -hmm. flushing hydrants, and it'll allow yeah. for more messaging. Yeah, on the more information. Yeah, more information. Yes. <laughs> just two more things. Christmas Carol. Right. So any customer who has um, a returned, like chargeback. Credit card or return check will be automatically kicked out of the budget billing. Um, and then any customer customer agrees that the account balance will be paid in full before they move to a new location. So it needs to start over. Um, if they move to a new location, the balance has to be paid in full and they will need to start over. But if they move to a new location and they're already in the program, can they continue in the program or do they have to wait another 12 months? I would think they I think as long as you're in good standing. As long yeah. as you're in good standing. Yeah. Yeah. We may need to adjust that. Yeah, I, I agree. As long on that. as you're in good yeah. standing, if you move yeah. from Broad Street to. The thing that gets you is the ones that aren't in good standing, they leave, they move out of Blackstone. That's the ones that are hard to get. And that happens a lot, folks. <laughs> and they only have to be in good standing for six months. I'm sorry. It could increase the delinquencies, but that's why our collection policy, we want to make sure that we're really. Staying on top of burns and staying on top of uh, garnishments and any of those kinds of things. That four hundred some thousand dollars since nineteen ninety two. Can you imagine what could have been done with four hundred thousand dollars since nineteen ninety two? Add interest to that too. What oh. should be gained? No doubt, six hundred thousand um, dollars. Thank you, Miss Harris. Any questions for Miss Harris? Thank you so much for everything y'all do.
Jennifer, are we forgetting anything? One more thing. The oh Department God. of Justice, the, mm -hmm. they set that. Grant I think that's on your, uh, at your desk as well, and I apologize for the late hour. This is a grant award. And this we're is a grant award of $39,000. I did sign that but I would like the council to be aware of what we're doing. This is a significant computer upgrade that was in the budget for the police department. Right. And it's going to be local funds. We're using a grant that the right. That's the budget now. I mean, granted, it doesn't matter. It's close to forty or fifty thousand. I want to say I, I, I it's ten new computers and and, the, and accessories and printers. But much of this is supplementing local money. So you need us to what? move to accept the award. Accept the award so and authorize no. execution. Ms. Thompson is second. Ms. Thompson is second. Uh, we we'll have a roll call vote because of the funds. Starting with Mr. Morgan. Aye. 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 Motion carries seven zero. We didn't need to roll call that because that was actually revenue, not. Expenses. I'm sorry. If I may just take one minute of your time, and I apologize, there have been two folks sitting in the back tonight that have been very quiet. They, uh, other than Jim Hasbrook, could be my favorite Blackstone residents. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, the Edmonds is live around, around South Amelia Avenue. Um, if you've been reading the paper recently, there was an advertisement by Jim Elliott for the sale of a piece of property, the old Green Hill Estate property. Some of you have been around a while. Remember down on Dillard Street, remember there's a really tough looking old trailer down there and a house attached to it. And Tessie was the guardian ad litem for the, remember it was a real mess. So it ended up being sold at a tax sale. A gentleman named Carlton Jones purchased that property at the tax sale and the sale was approved. Okay. But there was a tremendous, tremendous amount of asbestos in the house when the town tore it down. And Mr. Jones inherited that that cost. Okay, there's been some discussion about trying to uh, 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 abate some of the cost with him, and and if he'll pay up front. If you remember, this is four or five years ago. Uh, that red, red trailer. That red trailer. Okay, Mrs. Edmonds is here just to make sure that you guys understand. And I am in agreement. I've asked Tessie already to start working on this. If you look at the advertisement, not only Carlton Jones, but all the heirs of the Green Hill Estate are still listed. The problem is Mr. Jones had never recorded the deed, has never recorded the deed, so it's still showing up as the previous property owners. But we know a special warranty deed has been issued by the court selling that property to Carlton Jones and perhaps his wife as, as, as owners, but uh, they're asking is there anything they need to do or council needs to do to get their name off of that. And I've got Tessie working on it. I don't think it's something council can act on, but they want everybody to be aware. And I agree, this is not their baby because it was legally sold at, at tax sale probably in 2014. It's been a while. Gosh. Okay. Okay. Hit the high points? Yes. Okay. He's put you in high, in rare air comparing y'all to Jim Hasbrook now. That's a, <laughs> that's a high comment. It's a high comment. At this, at, <laughs> at this point in the meeting, any citizens who would like to speak, this is your second and final chance to speak tonight. I see a hand up in the back. I see Deborah Colbert. recognized it too and what it is is road salt after if you remember the time of the year when they poured that it's usually late in the, in the year still green concrete and we hit it with road salt it, the town caused it and uh, we've had B&B &B consultants look at it and it was our I can't say negligence because we got to put down something on South Main Street uh, but that's what caused the, that flaking yeah. The green concrete with a hot mix of road salt has even caused toward it. Jimmy Johnson's block when you when you run that you see how the, the top the top of it is just coming off. No. Um, it's from the road salt. But if you look at the curb and gutter we pour on side streets or back streets, don't have any of it because we don't put, we don't apply salt chemicals there. on the back streets. It's fixable. But we just have to put it. In, we have to prioritize and redo it. And we're going to try to come up with a sidewalk plan budget this year. Sidewalk rotation. Really, downtown now. Downtown, the merchants are responsible for the sidewalk. Is that right? They're responsible for the snow removal on the sidewalk. Right. That would be the town. I mean, we need to 
be better at the Bagley House. You can see all those pine tags are there. There are places across the street, and I can't dispute your findings. We need to go out there and get some pine tags up, but I got to get the rest of the leaves up before I can get the pine tags up. But you are correct, and it, it is the town's responsibility. Okay. Can I have one more time? Absolutely. Philip does, correct, yes. For which one? For the sidewalks. The TAP 21? The, yeah. the TAP 21 grant. Well, I know in one of the meetings it was mentioned that they were going to uh, build a football field for the younger kids. Correct. Possibly, yes. Possibly. We're, we're supposed to be meeting with the county at some time. Tearing down one is built. They plan right. at that time. I was just wondering you know, if you could do like a diagram so that the public could have some input as to what maybe they would like to see there. Mm -hmm. Certainly. I think walking talk, trails have been mentioned, too. I we, talked to Pettis on the school board, and he agreed that it was their responsibility to clean up the area. He said if he had anything to do with it, they would get this, the school to clean it up. Is good man. That, now, he told me that at a basketball game. And whether the other two going along with it, I don't know, but that was his idea. And Deborah's a good member of our beautification committee meeting, which I, we're going to have a meeting soon, I think, uh, and we're going to have a, two or three recommendations in the council would be very benign, very benign. Um, anyone else who'd like to address the council this time? Mr. Mitchell, yes, sir. For, oh, the street lights behind ViewMac? Right. Oh, really? Several street lights, he says, are out, by, like around ViewMac, those Renaissance. Well, the town lights should still be on. The, around the sidewalks should still be on. Ours are coming from that side from 4th Street to around the first front. Are you talking about the street lights on the pole or the antique street lights? I don't know. I think it's the pole. I'm not sure if they're we'll, we'll check it out. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. You. With no further business, I declare the meeting adjourned at 9.23 p.m. Seven minutes shy of my goal. Seven minutes shy. Come on. Hey, man. I'm not going to get mad.